there, Dominic. Yeah, so pretty. I'm so too excited. We got another meeting after this. Shit, then let's wrap it up. That's right. Man. Okay. We uh, I need a motion and a second to exit the executive session. So moved. Second. Uh, Laura, will you please call that roll? Peters. Yes. Revolt. Yes. Fonte. Yes. Foltz? Yes. Warren? Yes. Eastling? Yes. Soretta? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we are out of executive session. Let the record reflect no action was taken. Uh, at this time, reports. Uh, Director of Law. Oh, am I going the right way here? Yeah. No. Um, no. I'm, I'm sorry. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. He's already started talking. Director of Law. Thanks, Tim. Sorry, but uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to point out on the meeting schedule that for the twenty first, uh, we have on tonight's agenda that there be a committee as a whole, but. I'm asking if council would consider because the applicant uh, would need an emergency if we didn't put on ordinance 72 and 73. These are for the mortgages for the, uh, for the sanctuary for the public improvements. And then for, we haven't had, given it a number yet, but it was in committee this evening, the same thing for the uh, mortgage for AMC Land Company in the uh, Monticello development. So you need a special council meeting for next week, 21st. 21st. And it would actually be for all three items that are on yes. committee tonight, yeah. if we could? Okay. I make motion. motion? Yep. Got a motion? Is there a second? Uh, did the let me let me repeat the motion. Yeah. So we've got uh, motion to consider a special council meeting on October twenty first. Ordinance number seventy one two thousand nineteen. Uh, uh, ordinance number seventy two and, and seventy three. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, it was seventy two and seventy three. Yes, sir. And then the three items that are referenced on our. Special committee the whole meeting this evening. One, personnel and safety, which is a collective bargaining agreement. Second is the under finance and property, which would be the budget commission resolution. And the mortgage with AMC. Spot on. Okay. I'll second that. All Wonderful motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We will have that meeting directly following the committee of the whole. Does that work? Okay. Tim, you done? Yes, sir. Nothing right. further. Let me start down here now. Deputy Director Farina. Thank you. I know we've lost some audience members here, but I was going to announce a few things quickly. Um, first one is the curbside yard waste uh, leaf recycling program has begun. Um, the pickup will be running from uh, October 20th through November 24th, but the uh, bags are available now at uh, Bowler um, Hardware, and you just have to come in and show your utility bill, your 25 bags. So it'll be uh, going through uh, November 17th, now through November 17th that those are available. Um, also wanted to mention if people are uh, watching our social media, our Facebook page, we have the local business spotlight that we've been um, highlighting new businesses popping into North Canton. So we've had up there South Main Auto, um, Town Nails, Sarah Delane Beauty Company, and coming soon up we're gonna be um, featuring Barrel Pools and the new Hometown Urgent Care um, coming into the Acme Plaza. So people seem to enjoy seeing a little bit of the stuff happening and the new business coming in. 
And uh, it's not too early to mention this, just to, we'll continue to mention the Winterfest that we will be having, which is the tree lighting ceremony is moved to a Saturday. Years and years, it's always been a Sunday. It's going to be on Saturday, December 7th. So that's going to be... Uh, what time? Um, Four to seven. Yeah. It'll be, we'll have a lot more details, but I just thought I'd throw it out there now, and then we'll continue to, to uh, give more information as we get closer. And another uh, holiday thing just coming up, if you haven't seen our trick-or-treat time, you know, what we do have is, is Sunday the 27th from 3 to 5 p.m. That's all I have. Thank you. Director of Administration. Yes, in regards to additional details for the Winterfest 2019, here are some. Uh, we've been meeting with uh, a group of uh, volunteers at on this project, we've been uh, today. We had a meeting with uh, Main Street business holders. Uh, we did move this event to Saturday, December seventh. Uh, this is, was determined to be more business friendly. Uh, some of the businesses aren't open on Sunday, but they're open on Saturday, and they can stay open a few uh, extra hours if need be. Uh, some of them are open till eight nine o'clock at night on Saturday anyway. So this worked out a lot better. Uh, uh, this event uh, this year is going to be a big expansion from years past, uh, much more to do. Uh, the Stark County Library, Stark County North Canton Library is uh, spearheading an effort to have uh, a number of vendors, craft vendors, on the portico. There will be 12 uh, from north to south. Um, we will have uh, food uh, on the north end and uh, the Main Street Grill will provide food on the south end. They're doing a special Christmas menu of, uh, of food that could be enjoyed by all. JC's will handle food on the north end. Uh, decorations. Uh, member Soretta has been working on a very special plan uh, for uh, and contacting a business owner along on Main Street to put a special display out. That's potentially moving along well on the city hall side of the street we're look to be wrapping the pillars with lights uh, we bought some decorations to put in the courtyard on the square that's what we refer to the space between the huntington and city hall is courtyard on the square so you'll be uh, having some christmas decorations uh, holiday decorations there as well <clears throat> uh, the we've uh, secured a a stage with a built-in sound system from Stark Parks via donation that they received from Kempthorne Motors to put this together. That'll be parked in uh, on um, West Maple facing into the square. Most of this event will occur in the square this year. We will not have the square blocked with bleachers and utility vehicles from our street department and stuff like that. We want to provide a clear line of sight up to the fire station. Uh, and uh, the entertainment will occur within that square uh, on, the, on the, the, the main drag. The roads will be closed. The event will start at 4. There will be ice sculpting. We've got characters uh, in costume. Uh, the library will be providing the, the princess readers. Uh, uh, we are going to host those inside City Hall uh, on that time so the children can come in, sit on the floor of City Hall, have the princess characters read them some stories, awesome. get some out of the cold a little bit. Maybe the parents will do the, ven the vendors on the portico while their kids are getting stories read to them. So, I mean, this is really coming together. Uh, Gary Chapman from the Pine Cone is going to decorate all the building window storefronts in his block. So it's, uh, it is a really cool event uh, shaping up. Mr. Fonte. Um, how soon will we have something that we can promote? Because I usually see it's under-promoted from the 10, 20 year past. Funny you should ask. Uh, we have uh, spoken to some businesses up and down Main Street that have electronic uh, digital signs that will be putting the word out. We're getting banners that we're going to hang up uh, in Bitzer Park. Uh, we have posters to be distributed to put in Main Street business windows and then some flyers that we can hand out at various uh, functions uh, how soon um, there it's in the works for, as we speak and we're okay. going to have a dedicated Facebook page just for this event because I like to share stuff like that yep <laughs> we count on that 
How would you name some of the participants, you know, like some of the people involved on the chair so these folks know and when they run into them they can thank them? Yeah, we have uh, well, uh, Abby Tanner from the JCs, right. uh, Tom Gogol, who's the new owner of Main Street Grill, Gary Chapman, the Pine Cone, uh, we got representatives from St. Paul and from Walsh uh, participating as well. Then we were over Christina at the library. Weirich from Christina Weirich from the at the library. library. She's pretty involved. So a lot of good people stepping up to do a really cool stuff. Thank you for that Thank report. you. That concludes my report. Good report. Thank you, Patrick. Mr. Mayor. Yes. We have, um, so Dr. Julie Thomas down on South Main Street. She has her dental office there, and uh, she recently purchased that building, and so she's going to be expanding and adding two more dentists, uh, which is really nice. Uh, her business is going really well, so you love to see people investing back uh, into the city. And um, then we had uh, the tour of the Diebold facility, and it went really well, and I want to thank the council members for uh, all their effort that they put into that, and also our administrator. Uh, Patrick Diorio and uh, Kathy Farina. Governor was very impressed. I mean, it was a very impressive tour. Uh, Diebold is uh, very satisfied with the workers that they've gotten so far, as they indicated that the, the quality of the work that they're getting from uh, from the full-time people and also the temporary uh, staff, they're really impressed with it. You know, because quality control is really important with the ATMs. But they have about 80 positions to fill. Uh, right now in this first phase and so you can go two routes one if they want to get if people want to get immediately hired um, they can go through Alliance Industrial Solutions uh, or they can also apply at um, uh, Diebold directly but that's a little bit longer of a process so usually what they do is they bring the people in they get them working get an idea of what their skill sets are and where they could best uh, utilize them and then they plug them into the system. So anybody that's looking for work, it's a great opportunity. And you can go to Alliance Industrial Solutions. Um, and um, and again, uh, you know, it's it's not every day that you have the governor that comes into the city. And he was very impressed with North Canton. And uh, you know, he commented too about how we're one of the safest and best places to live in the United States. So we appreciate him coming in, and he's really just such a good guy he's very gracious and just a humble guy but it was just a, it was an honor and a privilege for him to come to the city of North Canton and I want to thank all the council members for their support and, the, and our staff for that thank you all right thank you mayor uh, director of finance uh, no report but I wanted to address one question that came up during public speaks as far as why a contract would be attached or not attached to a piece of legislation Typically the way we handle that currently is if the legislation references an exhibit, such as a contract, we would attach that to the signed legislation, or if it was submitted with the legislative request. Um, neither of those things was the case for the ordinance that was being discussed, but we can certainly get it on the website if you know administration wishes to send it over to us and, okay. and council wishes it to be there. All right. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Engineer Graham. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, usually I like to talk about kind of our glamorous and high profile, expensive projects and <coughs> grants we're fortunate enough to get. But tonight it's none of that. It's a uh, crack ceiling. And uh, it's very important, but it's kind of messy, fairly inexpensive, but again, very important to get those cracks in our newer to decent pavements uh, sealed up, keep that water out before winter. Water is the absolute enemy of our roads. Water gets in those cracks, freeze thaw, freeze thaw, breaks them apart. Uh, so we're going to spend about forty thousand dollars and start some crack sealing next Monday, weather permitting. Where is that going to happen? It's at? going to happen on uh, some of our busier roads, uh, the, sort of the middle section of Main Street. That we'd like to get another four or five years of life out of that pavement from uh, down at Rose Lane, north up to Seventh Street, that section. Uh, we're looking at Apple Grove from North Main Street west to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. The East Park we're going to repay. We mm -hmm. opened the bids a few weeks ago. I'm looking to make that award. But uh, that section of Apple Grove, 
we're looking at kind of Jonathan and Hallam, uh, both those streets connect to you know, the Everhard and South Main with traffic lights, school bus traffic. They've been paved in the last couple of years, but little cracks are starting to develop. So let's get those, we want to get those sealed up now to extend that life. Uh, another one is Lindy Lane from uh, Portage down to uh, Glenwood. Get that sealed up. That's the only ones that really, that, that our consultant, uh, or at least the, the uh, Tusco the company that's doing it. I had a couple more, but they thought they weren't quite ready yet. So. Rob, can I um, recommend something? Um, it, what, this, is what, this is the reason why um, I'm bringing this up on Weber. Hmm? No, I'm sorry, Briar. The first one we mm -hmm. that we uh, redid. Last year? There was the water main break at that, at that home. Right. And then we patch that. Do you recommend sealing that as well? That crack needs to be sealed. We've actually okay. asked our, or not crack, but that joint the needs patch, to be yeah. sealed. And then also to the Weber project, those joints with the old pavement needing the new still have to be done. Okay. It's on our punch list. Okay. And also the same neighborhood, the Eastbury project that we right. repaved earlier in the summer. Okay. That's so on our punch list. So same principle that joint from new pavement to old we need to seal that i agree just to keep that water up and okay. that is one that's on the list that patch that's where i was going with that so you're on top of it mm -hmm. all right good stuff um is that it that's it certainly. okay uh member revolt no report member fonte i was thinking about what um Shredder was talking about at the very beginning of the meeting and it makes me think of is the glass half empty or half full and we all look at things differently. You know, you don't want to look in the east for the sunset, right? You always want to look in the west for the sunset. So when I think about this, based on what we've been raised with and the struggles we've had in life, we process things differently through our rosy-colored glasses. And it made me think of a saying I remember hearing that stuck with me. It says, it's not what happens to you as much as how you respond to what happens to you. So, you know, you have, I mean, there's things that happen to all of us and you know to try to build that tolerance and we're humans we have emotions we're not robots so of course that's why sometimes people let their emotions get the better part of them and I think when you think about it just remember things are gonna happen crap happens to you it's just how you respond to when it happens that's all I have Amen. Thank, you. thank you Dominic member Fultz no report member Warren no report member Keesley Report, but Rob, can we get an update on the Everhard Railroad tracks? It's moving along, not as quickly as we had hoped. Ouch. <laughs> uh, Ouch. The, uh, That's not... We've got a progress meeting next week. <clears throat> Our last progress meeting last week, or bi-weekly, uh, the contractor was shooting for November 1st. Okay. That's still very aggressive. And he hoped to be setting the large uh, precast bridge structures as early as Wednesday this week. And if he gets the footing and stuff in enough and can start getting those set, it, it could happen November 1st, but that's still pretty optimistic. But they're willing to, to, they've even kicked around the idea of working double shifts, just working around the clock. They've already are working Saturdays and Sundays. Wow. Yeah. So wow. they're doing everything they can to, to get it open as quick as they can. But the, original 60-day date of October 24th is oh, probably not going to happen, but we're still shooting for a week after. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Rob. Member Serrata. Uh, just a couple things. Just piggyback on uh, what Pat said about our uh, winter fest. Um, one of the reasons for this is the 100th year of our tree. That's, I don't, I don't know if you said that or not, but I'm going to say it again, if not. Um, so that's kind of an important thing and and just something to, to be festive about you know yeah. at the same time at that um some of the things that uh, we we did get a new tree this year if you remember last year uh we had a unfortunate incident where it caught fire electrical shortage kind of thing so our insurance allowed us to get a new tree and the same people that you know worked with us to get a tree that, that and i believe it came in and we're gonna look at it tomorrow or the next day something like that yeah um so along with that, um, there we got some extra tree with some of the donors that we've been working with over the years um, with 
you know, all, all that stuff on the tree was donated. In fact, the tree was donated in the first place, so I might have understand it wasn't city dollars for the most part. Uh, but every year we add uh, more and more uh, ornaments because every year many of those break. You know? And uh, so we, we did get some more this year. So I, I, we have donors, but I'm always looking for people who want to donate to that. So feel free, if you know someone, uh, to come forth. Uh, so that, that stuff's not easy to care for and get the up-to-date stuff. Um, the other thing, I did contact Stu Lickner about the front lawn. Just for your purposes, we're looking at maybe doing something on that. That's going to be, there's some things that we have to work out there to make that really cool for some of the kids and, and our community kind of thing. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, also, uh, met with uh, Superintendent uh, uh, Jeff Wendorf today. More so about, you know, creating more of an atmosphere between us. And he's going to meet with a lot of people, and and has and uh, uh, and being you know more transparent and, and doing some more team stuff. Uh, we want to be better, like we always want to be, and they do too. So, uh, good conversation. I think uh, there's some good things that uh, we can work together on. Um, you know, they're looking at buildings. Uh, we talked to things with uh, sports complex, DRD, a lot of good things, and a lot of positive stuff. So we need to just stay focused on working together and being a little bit more transparent. And we talked about ways that, you know, we can have more meetings together or, or meet more often to know everybody's, um, you know, what they're doing. So when things come out, you know, not, we're not just uh, saying that, you know, we don't know about this and they don't know about what we're doing. So we need to just, you know, stay together and, you know, especially we're talking about, you know, parks and different sporting events and so on that affect us all and the roads that we do over there and the park system that we're going to put over there. So let's keep that in mind that the conversations are open between us, um, all of us and them, not just Mark, but all of us. Um, and we're, we've got to move forward to do what's best for the community. And that's, I think we're all wanting to do that. So just want to let you know about that. Hopefully uh, all of you will be in those conversations as it moves along. That's all I got. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you, Mark. Actually, I'm meeting with him on Wednesday morning, so all of you will probably be will be reaching out to all of you to set up a time to sit down. So, okay. good, good stuff. Okay, uh, moving on, our October-November meeting schedule, the 21st, uh, Committee of the Whole, and our newly added special council meeting. 28th will be the special committee meeting, budget only. That's the one that we're all really looking forward to. November 4th, no meeting. The 11th is a regular council meeting. November 18th, Committee of the Whole with a public hearing, two public hearings, one at 645, one at 650, and November 25th, regular council. At this time, final call to the council for new business. And seeing none, I will ask for a uh, motion, to adjourn. motion to adjourn out of this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned from the council meeting, and now I'd like Ooh. to uh, Quickly. motion er, uh, start the special committee of the whole uh, meeting Monday, October 14th, 8.58 p.m. Laura, will you please call the roll? Revolt? Here. Fonte? Here. Peters? Here. Fultz? Here. Warren? Here. Kiesling? Here. And Soretta? Here. Southern President? Okay, um, moving forward, uh, we're going to start doing uh, some things different, especially in the, uh, in the uh, committee meetings. When legislation is being introduced, whoever introduces that legislation will take the lead on that. Explain it to the council and the chairman of, or chairwoman of that uh, committee, uh, what they're trying to accomplish, and then at that point, once... Um, once they've presented it, then the, the uh, committee chair will take it and run from that point. You understand what I'm saying? Not yes. Okay. I didn't get Jesus. the whole thing. So what admitting, first of all, what are, we, what are we doing and why are we doing this? For, let's, let's make for sure example, on the first item, um, it's the an ordinance authorized the mayor to enter into a successor collective bargaining agreement. There is a legislative request attached from the Director of Administration, uh, I believe. Is it you, Pat? Yeah. Requesting that we talk about this in committee and craft the legislation and pass it. So whoever the originator of the request is, whether it be Director of Admin, the Mayor, the Engineer, uh, Director of Law, Finance, 
they then take the lead on the conversation. They they present it, everything, because some of them aren't as straightforward. They're a lot more nuanced, and instead of just turning it over to the committee chair, totally agree. Um, yep. I think that's going to help avoid some confusion. Yeah, like so. Okay. So with that being said, uh, first up, personnel and safety. We have a legislative request from Director of Administration. I will let Pat take it from here. Thank you. Um, what we're talking about here is a uh, the current contract that is expired for the uh, Utility Workers Union of America. These are the at the water treatment plant. This contract, three-year contract, expired uh, September 30th of this year. Uh, we entered into negotiations with that uh, group. Uh, <coughs> With uh, the following changes, we are recommending uh, moving forward with this. Their uh, union has voted and signed uh, the agreement with these changes. As it relates to wages, they were asking uh, for a 3% raise per year for the three years of the contract. As you recall, this is uh, similar to what you uh, agreed to for the service workers union and uh, other union uh, negotiations throughout the year. Uh, in addition, we uh, asked for some language cleanup as it concerned um, uh, overtime. Uh, this was consistent with what we did with the service workers union as well. Uh, we also put in here our request for uh, medical marijuana language as is in all the other contracts. Also, uh, a reference on the health insurance employee benefits that we offer that that not that language not be specifically included uh, item by item in this contract that it be referenced to our website where we maintain uh, the employee benefit package uh, particular to this union based on when this agreement goes into effect, what those benefits are. As you recall, the finance director pointed out uh, that we will keep that uh, information uh, for the length of this contract there so those workers will be able to see what their benefits are. This saves us about 15 uh, written pages in this contract as related to spelling out all the details of the health insurance. So now we can just point them to the website and say all the details are over there. In addition, uh, there were two other monetary uh, considerations uh, recommending that we accept them as they were very minor in detail. They are, first, as it relates to uh, individuals at the water treatment plant who hold certificates for special um, skills that they have. Uh, some hold a certificate for uh, their bio biology uh, license uh, and others for, I'm having a brain freeze, what the other one is, it's, lab. Uh, the lab, the lab work. Uh, they presently, under the expiring contract, get $450 stipend for each one of these certificates that they hold. Uh, they had asked that that be changed to uh, $900 per certificate. In other department that we have where certificates are available in the service workers union, we have a water distribution certificate and an agricultural uh, herbicide pesticide certificate. And in that, in that union contract, they have been, for a period of time now, been receiving $900 per certificate that they hold. So the water treatment plant operators uh, are asking for the same treatment that the others have been enjoying for some time. So uh, the cost to us uh, on that is a, uh, approximately uh, $2,800 um, it's like, uh, per year. Uh, so I thought that we thought that was something that we could agree to. And then also the second item was on a uh, shift differential. Uh, they get a shift differential right now of 25 cents per hour. Uh, we believe that this shift differential has been in place 
uh, longer than any of us have been here serving the city uh, without change. They're asking for an additional 25 cents and calculated out, uh, we believe that to be approximately $3,000. So the two additional monetary items that they asked for total about $5,800 a year uh, as an additional cost to the city uh, in light of the, the cost of um, wages and employee benefits as a whole for this. It's a very, very inconsequential number, about one per less than 1% of what their total package is. Uh, and uh, we would recommend uh, that council look upon this favorably. This would be the last collective bargaining agreement that we have. All the other ones are done now. Quick question. Is the certificates that these people hold that need a stipend, is that like uh, continuing education, like every three years has to be updated once a year? Do they pay for that or do we pay for that? Uh, well, they are certificates that uh, are re they are required to maintain, and by contract we require them to you know, maintain them if they want to get the stipend. Um, it's a little bit beyond, I would just say, continuing education where you would just show up at some college and get a credit or something like that, because they're involved with EPA, and these things have to meet the EPA requirements. Uh, these individuals sign the reports that go in the file of all the tests that they run uh, that run you know a thousand tests a week on water and they sign their name to these testing that that, that it's all accurate uh, we would hate to have to go uh, to outsource that uh, because of the volume the cost the timeliness uh, do this is very important that they be uh, motivated to keep that and thank you that it's minor cost uh, certainly the cost to outsource something like that would be significantly higher I'm good that's all I just was curious thank you Pat any other questions for uh, Patrick regarding this Mark you good okay thank you Patrick I appreciate it and you need that on emergency I'm assuming time is of the essence we have what seven days from the time the day Well, we're going to have a meeting next week as per member votes and what you voted on. Yeah. This is one of the items that's going to be on the agenda. That's right, yeah. Okay. Okay, we're good to go. All right, next up, finance and property. You've got A and B are two separate legislative requests on this one. Laura, it uh, pertains to A and Pat, legislative request pertains to B. So, Laura, would you like to start? Sure. Item A is a proposed resolution for council to accept the tax amounts and rates for the next tax year. This is part of the annual property tax process that's set out in revised code, and there's a number of documents that go back and forth between the city and the county auditor's office. This is basically the county has sent us this sample resolution. <coughs> if you look at Schedule A, they've set forth what our property tax rates are, both the voted and unvoted and what they estimate the revenue to be for that, for the next tax year. If council accepts this and sends it back, then the county can levy those taxes on our behalf. Um, these are all levies that we've had in place for a number of years, including the street and storm sewer one mill levies each that are on for renewal on the November ballot. Um, they do go through next tax year. So even if for some reason those would not get renewed, we would still have more chances at those. So they do appear here. Any questions on any of that? Chair, you okay with that? Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Patrick. Yes, uh, <clears throat> item B concerns uh, modification agreement of an open-end mortgage. Uh, this concerns property in the Monticello development. So the easiest way to explain it is that uh, if you consider the parcels uh, that were in Monticello, each one is a letter of the alphabet A through Z. Uh, a through V have been built upon and for the purposes of collateral that we held we held on to property X the end of the alphabet the least desirable properties to be built upon and so now that all the other parcels have been developed we're down to the end and parcel X 
which was the collateral for the rest of the alphabet that came before, is now uh, desired to be built upon. So it can't be collateral that gets in the way of the person wanting to do it. So we're going to switch, we're going to flip the collateral to parcel Y so that parcel X can be developed. And eventually, when parcel Y is developed, we'll move it to Z, and that's how the process works. So it's very routine. We do it all the time um, with all our de development subdivisions. Okay, sounds good. Steph, you good? Yeah. Thank you. Are we good? Thank you, Patrick. That concludes our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.